Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video from Fanboys Forever. Today we're going to be unboxing the brand new Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull playset. As you can see, it has arrived in its shipping box. I got mine from Walmart.com. I pre-ordered way back in the day. I think it was in October when this pre-order went out. I, I actually felt fairly confident that it would get cancelled, but I was really glad to see that it went on through and it got here in like a single day after it shipped. So, uh, color me surprised, but I'm glad that I made it. So, it actually just shipped in this box. I'm struggling to get everything in the review station, but we'll see what we can do. This way, we'll just cut the top. And let's see what we've got. That looks familiar. Coming out upside down. <laughs> and there is Castle Grayskull. And oh my gosh, the uh, packaging artwork is tremendous. I really love what they've done, and that's something that I think that they've really done a fantastic job of so far in the line. All the artwork looks very classical, I guess is the right word. You can see that you've got the original eight back characters right here, all posed alongside Grayskull. And it's interesting because you really wouldn't think so. And it's interesting because I would imagine a lot of people will probably see this artwork and think they reuse some kind of classic artwork. No, this is newly commissioned. And I think this is uh, terrific. As a matter of fact, I think it kind of rivals the uh, Masters Classics version of the box art. So it does come with a special edition Temple of Darkness sorceress. I kind of like the uh, weird zombie guys that are right over there. But I love the artwork of uh, some of the other characters. What you can't tell here is that Masters here is actually kind of like embossed, like it's 3D through here. Like you can actually feel the texture of the letters. That's really cool. At the top, you have the jaw bridge opens and closes, warrior practice for combat. The flag shows who controls the castle, which is the intention of that. You have a trapdoor surprise, a laser for would-be invaders, weapons and racks. An elevator carries warriors upstairs, and the castle folds in half for easy carrying. You can see that we have some really cool artwork. Look at this. This is Fisto down here. Man, that looks awesome. We have some cool like pterodactyl looking beasts. Then we have some planets. Fortress of Mystery and Power for He-Man and his foes. I think originally when they shown this, they had misspelled Fortress. So I'm glad to see that I can confirm that yes, they did correct that. Here we have the photography on the back of the box, and this is just an awesome looking shot. And on the other side of the box, we have some cool planetary artwork, and we have this really cool shot of Battle Cat and Panthor. And here's just another product shot, but this may help somebody. All right. Man, this thing's heavy to lug around. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and open up the actual box. Looks like we just have some tape here holding it together. Okay, you can see the castle inside. Ah, there is Castle Grayskull. And naturally, you get a giant sticker sheet, which actually is in one piece and isn't like bent or anything. I thought for sure it'd be creased all the pieces. Behind the sticker sheet, you get the Sorceress. This is what it looks like without anything attached to it. And this is how it comes out of the box. Kind of hilarious to see the inverted eyes of Castle Grayskull there. All right, well, let's go ahead and let's put this thing together. All right, fanboys and fangirls, and here we have, after a fairly painless assembly, I think the biggest problem was just getting those stickers on there, and we all know how tricky and frustrating that can be. But uh, after all that is done, here we have it. We have Origins Castle Grayskull. And it's kind of something I think we all wonder every time there's been a Masters line announced of any sort, are they going to get around to Castle Grayskull? And uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> And I can't wait to get into all of it with you.
First of all, we'll start with just the exterior details of the castle. We'll start from the top to the bottom. We see we have a turret up here. We have the wood grain and we have the flag. And so when we open it up, I'll show you the other side. Right now it's being controlled by evil, looks like. Over here, we have the gun turret right here. And that's rotatable and we'll look at that a little more as we go inside. Here's something that we really Here's something that we really haven't seen before with any version of Castle Grayskull, and that's this interesting kind of speckle effect that goes throughout the castle. You can see that there's just like little specks of white as we go through all of the stonework, plastic work, I guess. You can see as we go that it's just a little extra something to give it more of a kind of realistic quality of stone. You can see that it's not as apparent on this area like the cheek area, but I think that's because the spray on there, which is kind of the light lime green, is sort of covering up where it would be. You can see that the inside of the eyes and the nostril is kind of sprayed with black. You can see there's more of that green spray over here, more of it over here, and a little more on the top. I think it's used very well. Of course, slightly close up, it may look a little weird, but I think from a distance, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. You can also see the fantastic detailing on the door it's funny how a fan-created character like Castle Grayskull Man will forever like, change my perception of something classic like the uh, crest on the front of the Castle Grayskull door. He was a classics figure, not an Origins figure. Hopefully, they uh, will do an Origins figure eventually. You can see that on the side, we have more of that stonework as we go through. Looks really terrific. I'm very surprised with just the level of quality in all of the stone uh, sculpting. I also like that that's a real window right there, so you can actually have a figure on the inside. It's very important that we get a feel for how big this thing is. There's really no use in bringing out any classic Masters figures because they're the same size as the Origins. So here is the Origins standard He-Man with, of course, the vintage head that you can get with the uh, battle armor He-Man. And you can see the scale is really perfect. I mean, especially even if you put him up here, he's still plenty tall enough for He-Man. So if that works out well, let's see what it would look like for a Masters Classics figure. Now, granted, this is Dolph Lundgren He-Man, so he might be a little taller than your average He-Man. Honestly, it's not quite as bad as I thought it would be. Of course, this is a six and a half inch scaled line, and uh, this is a playset that's more intended for a five inch figure. And really, it almost works. That's a castle without its king. Here's the second version of King Grayskull. And like I said, because that Dolph Lundgren He-Man is a little taller than your average Masters Classics figure, this works really even better. So I think Lundgren He-Man might have been a little misleading. This is pretty much just about okay for this thing. So guys, uh, you know, if you don't want to pay those high uh, secondary market prices, this could be your ticket right here for a Castle Grayskull. And of course, we'll have a little fun... <laughs> Mini Gray Skull. And of course, you can get this with any of the mini. Speaking of those mini masters, Brandon gave me this one. It's Jitsu. All right, let's see how Jitsu looks. And honestly, that's pretty cool. So I like that a lot. You can kind of hang out in here in one of the eyes. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and have a look at the rest of the castle. Here's one side of the castle. This is the hinge side. And this is actually a little metal beam inside of this. So it gives it a little bit of extra support and a little bit of that extra quality to it. So that's how it looks on one side. You can see they're still doing some of that lime green overspray. And very quickly, this is what it looks like on the other. You can see that it uses a clasp system that's uh, pretty similar to other Castle Grey Skulls. I suppose it's here that it looks a little strange as there's really no good uh, kind of visual transition. And here's where we have the mysterious back entrance to Castle Grey Skull. And we'll just have a look. I've always liked the weird kind of like brown shingles that are on uh, versions of Castle Grayskull. And I've always liked these little loops. What's cool is you can see in there. Gee, I wonder who that is. Hi, sorceress. This is how uh, she and Duncan met. <laughs> I also like how the carry handle just ends up looking like a window. So it's really neat. It's like a little citadel inside there. There's also little windows that are way too small to be in scale for the figures. But I love the idea behind it. You can see that more of that speckling is happening here. I think it looks really nice. Down here, we also have the secret door. And I really like this. It's not functional, but I still think it's really, really cool. 
So I love the back of it. And, you know, most people are never going to have it displayed this way. But I still think it's neat. And did someone say secret backdoor entrance to Castle Grayskull? Because this guy is always looking for a way in. So uh, if you haven't looked at their cool classics backstory that they came up with, uh, Scott Knightlick and the guys, they did a really good job coming up with a neat backstory for Scareglow. All right, well, we've looked at every angle of the castle, and that can mean only one thing. It's time to find out what sorts of magical secrets are inside. To do that, we'll go the classic way, and that is using the power sword itself. Now, if you look, we have a little slot right here, and any Castle Grayskull worth its salt will have this as the entrance. You push that in, and there it goes. The jaw bridge is open. So... You can see that if we stand He-Man here, even standing on the tongue, if you will, of the drawbridge, there is plenty of clearance for the head, so it's not a problem at all. It might be more of a problem to have him stand well on this tongue because it's a little bit of an uneven surface, but that's okay. Ah, there we go. See, it's not too bad. You can kind of brace it within the teeth. Speaking of the tongue and the mouth, let's just go ahead and have a look at that while it's open. I guess Castle Grayskull probably needs to see Molar, the attorney and dentist, because things are looking a little rough. This is uh, as cool as I've seen the teeth look, though. I mean, look at look at this. <laughs> These are really neat. The tongue sculpt is really neat. That's probably the last time you'll ever hear me say that. Uh, you can even get kind of a good little idea of an interior of the castle, even closed up like this. It's almost like a little clubhouse or something in there. And uh, I just think it looks cool, like getting a figures view. So now that Castle Grayskull is open for the figures, we need to open it for us. All you gotta do, turn it to the side and just undo the clasps. You can see it pops open. And sure enough, wondrous secrets were revealed to us. We'll put He-Man at the entrance here as if he's just getting home for supper. All right, we've adjusted our light a little bit so that we can see slightly better. And let's just go through. We'll start with this room here. This has always been one of my favorite rooms at Castle Grayskull because it kind of exemplifies the weird sci-fi and uh, fantasy elements merging into one as you have something like a computer console that would really belong right in the new adventures of He-Man. And what's cool is we have the satin flag that's actual soft goods right there. And there's another one on the other side we'll look at. But this just hangs freely and you can even unclip it from there and switch it to the other side or take it down if you wish like all the inverted stonework right there. It's kind of part of the charm of it. You can see we have the pulley for the elevator that we'll get into in a minute. I really like this. Um, I just got lucky getting the sticker on as good as I did, and I could see it being a real pain for most people, so just be aware of that. Moving on down, we can see we have the elevator at the bottom floor, and to activate it, all we have to do is pull. This goes up, and just like the classic toy, you let go and it actually stays in there really well. So I like that quite a bit. With that out of the way, you can actually see the secret door, which doesn't actually function or anything, but it's just cool that uh, the imprint is still left there. And there's lots of good room down here. I think it's terrific that the designers of Mattel must have, I'm telling you, I'm starting to suspect they really did just take a figure and measured it to make sure that even classics figures could get under here. And King Grayskull is one of the uh, taller ones and he does fit under here. I mean, he's pretty well crammed, but he's there. So I am very appreciative to Mattel for that. Even though Dolph He-Man can't get quite under there because he is abnormally tall, he will fit over here with the entrance way. So color me impressed. I never thought in a million years that these guys would fit in that area. And naturally, He-Man has no problem. Moving on from there, we will go up to the top and you can see we have the other side of the Castle Grey Skull flag to show you that, hey, the good guys are winning today. Down here, we can see that we have a platform. There is a foot peg right there. We have the turret, which is able to turn. Matter of fact, we can just turn this guy around and we can kind of just position it in different ways. If you want to, you could always just remove it and turn it around completely the other way. And here we have the sorceress lounging comfortably in the throne of Grey Skull. And yes, it's always a big question, will she fit? Yes, she does. And we'll get more into the figure here in a moment. Here we have another one of those satiny flags that looks really nice. Moving on down, we have the computer console, another one that I like. 
there is a sticker on the top there. And then we have the rug. And this is, of course, the trap door, just to show you how it works. Of course, we turn the throne. We'll let Trap Jaw be our unwilling victim, I mean, test subject. And we just turn the throne the rest of the way, and he gone. And what's funny is that leads us down here, and we have this cool sticker that shows you kind of the dungeon down here. And there's all sorts of great details on this thing. This leads us to the entrance area of the castle. And especially when the trap door is open, there's lots of good light that comes in, especially if you have the jaw bridge open. So that really helps. As we know, that can be a big problem with play sets when they're just uh, completely dark and just like a little cave. So lots of great stuff going on up here. If you want to reset the door, all you have to do is fold it up, turn the seat, and it locks back into place. Tila and Trap Jar are wondering what else the castle has to offer. And we do have some really cool extra items, one of which is the revolving ram here. And you can see that we can just turn it and it will spin. You can use this for a training implement, I guess. And one of them is a giant fist and one of them is a hog's head. I really like the detail of this little thing, particularly the sculpture on the uh, hog's head here. This definitely looks like something you might've seen in the background of a filmation episode. Even the legs are sculpted in a really cool way. And I like the kind of orangey gold to it. So this is a really cool piece, and this sort of does look like Fisto's hand, I guess, in a way. So really nice. Next up, we have the classic weapons rack that we all know and love. And these are the weapons that are actually included with the set. And you have all sorts of cool stuff. These, of course, uh, some of them are reuses of weapons that we already see in the line. Uh, things like Scareglow's staff. And you can see it's done here in just standard gray plastic. Of course, these are removable, and you can use them with any of the figures. Most of the weapons fit just fine. A few of them are a little loosey-goosey for my taste, though, uh, particularly the big staff here and the sword. They're just kind of flopping around, but they're not falling out either, so at least they're um, at least they're in there fairly securely. And She-Ra, the Princess of Power, is visiting from Etheria in order to make sure everything is up to code. Of particular interest is this new weapons rack, and I really like this. It's sculpted with such a terrific wood grain sculpt, and it really does look like a little sculpted wooden piece that this just happens to include. It is very hollow, of course, but it just has little shelving units for the weapons. So you can take any of the weapons from the more traditional weapons rack, and you can just lay them in. It doesn't always work great. You do have to get a good balance for them. If you try to put this in this way, it's just going to fall right out. But usually, uh, they're very easy to balance, and I think this is a really cool addition to the castle. So the sorceress isn't going to let them have all the fun. She has come down from her perch, I mean throne, up above, and we're going to have a look at this version. Now, many of you at home may be thinking, well, that's not the sorceress because the colors aren't right. But this is the Temple of Darkness sorceress, and if you're familiar with some of the old mini-comics, this was the pure white color scheme that they used for that particular mini comic appearance. Since then, lots of people, including myself, have really grown fond of this particular color scheme. As a matter of fact, my fondness for this goes back to probably a 1987 movie, which is something that I really love because the sorceress actually does appear in all white in that film. I really did enjoy her character in that film. So let's give this very first sorceress figure in the Origins line the attention it deserves. This is, I think, visually right on the money for how the sorceress appeared in that Temple of Darkness mini-comic. I really love the sculpting on the staff. It almost has a Native American kind of art vibe to it. I think it's really nice, and I like how deep that uh, the ridges and the wings go. I like the texture, which is kind of the feather texture on the front there. And, of course, the standard boots that we saw with Tila. Much of this body is, of course, reused from Tila. What I am surprised with is how good the head sculpt has turned out. I'm actually very, very surprised. Uh, not only is the paint application just spot on, and the eyes are perfectly aligned, and I just think it's a terrific update of the original figure, of course, in this case, with a mini-comic-inspired color scheme. And you can see at the top here that we even have the cool eagle-inspired headdress, and I really like that the eyes were even painted up there. And when you do it like this, it almost looks like that she has transformed. We have some pins back here, which allow the transparent wings to actually 
go back and forth. So I think that's really cool. This one looks like it's here to stay though, and I do not believe that that unpegs from the back. Other than that, she has all the standard articulation you would expect, including a cut at the waist. We have hinges, and we do have single joints. They can rotate at the elbows. We do have hinges at the hands. The head is able to actually go up and down and do a little bit of a cocking motion. We even have great leg articulation, single joints at the knees, but it can shift and rotate. We can do the splits very easily. We have a cut at the boot, a hinge, and some rocker movement. This is how she looks with the wings completely back. So if this is more your look, I think this works very well. I personally like the wings out, and this is the only way you're going to set her in the throne. If you put them back, then the wings are going to get in the way. As for any kind of issues, uh, the trouble is going to be that you're not going to be able to pick the best one because she's encased in the box. So you're kind of at the mercy of whatever you get. Uh, you can see that mine has kind of a funny little bit of white paint there. And uh, it's kind of strange, but it's really not too noticeable. As you can see in kind of a bright lighting, you would never know. So um, yeah, I think that overall I got pretty lucky. Hopefully you guys are just as fortunate with yours. So let's do some comparisons very quickly. We're going to have kind of a family reunion based on which continuity you subscribe to, of course. Here we have Tila right beside of her. And these two are a great match for one another as they utilize much of the same sculpting on the bodies, which is mostly down to the legs and boots being the same. And of course, here is the sorceress's man. We have man at arms. Now you can have the family game night that you've always longed for with your Masters Origins figures. One more comparison, and this is an important one. We have Masters of the Universe Classics, Temple of Darkness, Sorceress. And I really like this. Um, I think they look really nice together. And certainly though, they're a very different representations of the same character. Both feature transparent wings. The mechanisms are of course very different to activate those wings. Uh, there was lots of controversy at the time about this kind of gravity activated motion versus just putting them on the back like the original figure had sort of done. Even though there's such different styles of action figure, it's still really cool to see them together. So final thoughts about the castle itself. Um, I have to say, I think Mattel has done a terrific job with resurrecting Castle Grayskull. This is really quite substantial and a very impressive little tribute to the original castle. All the things that were charming about the original are very much retained here, and all the things that made the classics version so out of reach for so many people for so long are definitely downsized and kind of scaled back here so that this is a more affordable and a more attainable version of this castle. I will say it's already quite a hot item. I don't know how uh, that might change over time. You never know. I remember it went up for pre-order first at Walmart, just like all of the other figures, but since then, I believe that this is a general pre-order item. Of course, I got mine online from my pre-order, so hopefully anybody else who did the same will be getting there soon, but many, many people are reporting finding these in stores, and that includes in all sorts of different retail locations all across the U.S., and I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this once you get it in hand. Will you be as impressed as I was and think that it's just a really fun tribute to that original castle? Or are there some things that you felt were lacking? And I would love to hear your opinions about it below in the comments, of course. I will say this much. For the things that it might be lacking, I suppose, I guess, uh, instead of sticker detail, people like to have painted detail on things. I mean, most of these buttons are completely painted, and so are these. And so that's a little something, anyway. Of course, we would all love to see the dungeon area actually be done as a sculpted piece, as it almost was done in the Classics uh, version, but we know that uh, the sticker is still kind of the cost-effective way to go, so we would love to see that happen. So guys, looking at the castle with all of the figures stocked up into it and posed, and there's so many more that I could add, but this is just what I had laying around clothes, uh, this looks terrific. I have to say, I, I think that everything just works very well, especially when you start adding the figures and you have all those colors popping and everything. Just There's a vibe here. It's just so, so classic Masters. It is exactly what you want to see. It's exactly the feeling you want to get. It has that retro goodness just running throughout the castle. And it's going to be hard for me not to just display it like this. 
the entire time with figures just fully stocking the thing. And I think that it's just gonna look great like this. And one more thing, this is $75 here in the United States. At least it was at Walmart anyway. And since you get a terrific exclusive figure of a character we actually have not gotten before, it's like the opposite of what Mattel did with their superhero play sets. With that, on top of the really nice sculpt work, the really cool uh, paint spray that's on the castle, the many accessories, the cool action features, it is hard to deny that this thing is really well, well worth $75. And for it to be the massive height that it is, I am impressed. This thing is really, really fantastic. Nowadays, it seems like play sets are going out of vogue almost completely. Toy company after toy company really doesn't do them much anymore. And it seems like they're becoming very, very quickly a thing of the past. I am so happy to see that Mattel has honored the original Masters of the Universe line by making sure that that's just not the case here and that they're keeping this playset alive for an entirely new generation of kids. We don't know what the future of Masters will be exactly. We know that there's new projects coming with Masters Revelations and we know that there's the new Netflix show, of course, and we have no idea if there's gonna be more of these types of playsets or not. But I can rest easy in 2021 at least, knowing that, that this incredible tribute to the awesome original playset that was a staple of so many childhoods here in America and all over the world has been well represented by this new version. So to sum it up, I will let a very special guest character take it away. So what do you think, Castle Grayskull man? It looks good! All right, guys, thank you so much for watching my review today. Of course, the best way to keep up with Fanboys Forever is to subscribe to the YouTube channel. This way you don't miss any new videos that come out. And of course, hit that bell for notifications so that you're always notified of new videos. And it will hopefully keep you from getting unsubscribed as is wont to do lately to many of our subscribers. Also guys, we ask that you would please hit that like button. Of course, it helps with the algorithm and share this video on all your different social media platforms and groups. Let other fans know about this cool playset. And of course, guys, we thank you for watching. God bless you and yours, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Stay safe. Fanboy out.